Brothers and sisters, Brother John, watchmen for that great day. Well, this morning is Sunday, July the 2nd, and we're still here. Um, the messages have gone out, the warnings have come, the days have passed. We are now in the very last moments, perhaps seconds, minutes, hours, I don't know. But I do know that we are very, very close, and this is the most dangerous time in history to be without the Lord Jesus Christ in your life. If you've not made a decision by now, and this is for those who have not, or are sitting on the fence, right and left, oh, let me see, well, it's time. This is the day, this is the moment, and this is the time that you should reach out, call out to the Lord Jesus Christ and ask him to come into your life to forgive you of your sin. We are all sinners and we all fall short of the glory of God is what the word of God says. There is not one righteous, not one. We are all sinners, we all fall short and every one of us before we received Christ in our hearts, in our lives and walked in his word and did our best to try to follow the word we were all unsaved. But this day, this is the time, this is the moment. If you're unsaved today, you need to come. Now with that, I'd like to read for all of us, not just those who are unsaved, but for all of us, brothers and sisters, a little parable that our Lord Jesus uh, told his apostles. And this is in Matthew 22, 1 through 14. And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son. Hallelujah. We know where this is going. And set forth his servants, those of us who will call to people in the world, the servants of the king and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding and they would not come again he sent forth other servants this is at different times in uh, since Christ different times that servants were set out and to bring the good news to share the gospel with those who did not know the gospel so again he sent forth other servants saying Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. But they made light of it and went their ways. Isn't that the way of the world today? Don't you see that? The way the world is just looking to, they're having their own weddings and marrying and giving in marriage and feasts and drinking and you know the way things are in the world today so they made light of it and went their ways one to his farm another to his merchandise these are the things the 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 things of the world is basically what it's saying that that people you know were uh, diverted all right oh I have to make an excuse I can't come all right and the remnant uh, and the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully. This is the way people are treated even amongst us brothers and sisters when others lash out against you because they think they have more, you know, uh, spiritualness or, or more of the Holy Spirit or something, okay? But they entreated them spitefully and slew them. Oh my gosh, you know. We have not been slain, but then there have been people around the world that have been slain for the word of God because of their testimony. Remember, that, that can go into another whole rabbit trail, which would bring us to Revelations and those people that were under the altar at the time, you know, saying, how long until you avenge our uh, blood on the earth, right? Anyway, we'll continue to read in Matthew, verse 7. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth. He was angry. 
He had a right to be. He, he, he called to all the people, all his creation, let's say, sent his servants many times, and they just made light of it and turned away, and now nah, we can't come. And he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their cities. That shows judgment. Then saith he uh, to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. See, so there's a time that, that this call is going out, and there's a time of destruction, right? And then now, after a certain destruction, all right, which could have been 70 AD or somewhere in the past, all right, looking at this in present tense, Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. That's what the Lord has done since Jesus Christ has come and sent out many into the highways and the byways and called and, and all to come to this marriage, right? This is what we're waiting. The banquet is prepared. So in verse 10 he says, So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all. Notice the word gathered together. There is a gathering together that we all are going to experience. It's those who are saved, those who know the Lord Jesus Christ, have asked them to forgive give them of their sin, and that have been sealed by the Holy Spirit. So they went out and gathered together all, as many as they found, both bad and good. They just reached out to the world. The people were, there was people that came. And the wedding was furnished with guests. When the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. Now remember, this is a parable, and we're looking at it in, in past and present, and we're, this is the idea of reading something and letting, it, letting the spirit lead you. So what I just got from this, and when the king saw, uh, came in and saw the, his guests, and he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. This was in a parable, so it is an actual physical wedding, all right, in this sense that uh, will happen and has happened and many would come, but some would come and not be prepared. Some would, would desire the Lord, yet never having asked Christ to forgive them of their sin and making a personal relationship with them so that they can marry, they can be part of this marriage and actually we know that we're going to be married as the bride to Christ. So, in verse 12 it says, And he saith unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither, not having a wedding garment, not being prepared? See? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, take him away, and cast him into outer darkness, outside of the wedding feast, basically. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Brothers and sisters, we have been called and we have been chosen. Each one who's made that decision to Christ, it, it, the, his blood, his sacrifice is upon us, our spirit, our soul. We are sealed by the Holy Spirit which dwells within us. The day that comes that we hear the trumpet, which we will hear a trumpet, and it could be today, and it could be tomorrow, it could be in the next hours, 48, 72. We don't know, but we know if we're sealed by the Holy Spirit that when that day comes, we will appear before the Lord, and we will be gathered together in that place that he has prepared, which he says in John 14, 1 through 5 or 6. All right? It talks about, Jesus went to prepare a place for us. That's where we're headed, brothers and sisters. That's where we're going. And so the things of this world are paling very quickly because there's less and less in this world to, to uh, be able to enjoy. I mean, you can enjoy something if you're focused on it and push out the thoughts of everything else that's going around in the world. Uh, France is tearing itself apart. Uh, nukes are ready to be launched, uh, you know, you name it, okay? There's a lot of problems in the world right now, a lot of issues in the world. 
but there's one God. And that's the one who wins in the end, because we've read the end of the book. And the end of the book says we win. All right? And we win pretty shortly. Remember, Jesus said, I come quickly. And in his timing, quickly is two days. Well, we're at the end of those two days, which are a thousand years. Each, right? A day is a thousand years. Second Peter 3, 8. He's not... He's not slack concerning his promises, Second Peter 3, 9. He'll be here. But there's also the seven-year period, which we know by pretty much every watchman that is really worth watching, talking about this covenant that's going to be signed in the fall. September is the time. And supposedly on Rosh Hashanah or right in that area, there is a seven-year uh, agreement in the UN that is going to be made stronger or confirmed. And that time is two months, right? We're, we're basically July, August, September. Two months, give or take. Do we have until September 18th or before? I don't know. But I do know that it's this year. That's a fact. It's this year. The rapture will be this year because God is not slack concerning his promises. And that means a day for a thousand years and a thousand years for a day, which takes you from 30 AD to 2030. And there's a seven year period, no matter which way you look at it, shorten it, lengthen it, whatever. We have a seven year time frame that has to and must take place according to the last week. All right. The 70th week of Daniel. 70 times 7, 490, <laughs> which he only, he came, Jesus came at 483 years, leaving a seven year period. So brothers and sisters, and those of you who are not, and those of you who, are, who have not lived seriously for the Lord, and maybe even those of you that have backslidden, Jesus is calling. He loves you. It's time. It's time for all of us to make sure that we're uh, in the place where we want to be with the Lord. And, and it has nothing to do you know your 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 flesh and your spirit battle against each other so it's got nothing to do with oh i just i'm not in the will of the lord anymore the lord has sealed us the holy spirit lives within us it seals us we are sealed until that day of redemption there is no taking that seal away until the lord peels the seals okay and we'll be watching him we'll be in heaven watching him peel those six seals seven seals all right. So, if you're not a believer today, or if you are, and you're in a in a, uh, a place where you need to come back, all right, you just need to just trust God, begin to trust God more, and reach out to Him in prayer. He only wants a relationship with us. That's what He wants. He's our God. He loves each and every one of us. He wants a close and loving relationship with each one of us. So don't, uh, don't neglect your Lord who loves you, who came for you, died for you on the cross. If you're unsaved, you need to believe that, that he loves you in no uncertain terms. Many it might be, there might be, man might be willing to lay down his life for you. But Jesus laid down his life for all of us. Think of that. Not just one man to save a man's life, but to save all men's life. So with that, I'll give you the shout, the sound, the blast on the shofar. Okay? I love this thing. It, 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 it wakes us up. It gives us uh, presence of mind to, 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 to hear, to, to hear inside of, of the frequency, of the, the feeling of it sometimes. Sometimes the hair on the back of my neck when I'm blowing it goes up, you know? 
I just feel tingles. <laughs> but it's not about feeling, really. It's about faith. It's about knowing that you know that you know that Jesus Christ is Lord. He's coming to get us soon. He could come very soon. He could come today, a couple of hours from now, a couple of minutes from now. Now. But I'm still here. I haven't heard the, the, the shofar. But what if I blow the shofar and all of a sudden it's the real thing? <laughs> oh, anyway, God bless you. I love you. There is a live stream coming if we should be here. But it won't be until later this month. So I'll release the information as it comes and as we get closer. If we still are here. But the way it looks is we might not be here, brothers and sisters. So keep looking up. I love you. I know the Lord loves us all. And be blessed today, all right? Let this be the sound that we just listen to and let it just go through us, all right? Anybody that needs healing today, let the, the sound of the vibration of the shofar go in and let it touch you in such a way that God just heals your DNA, all right? That God is in our DNA, brothers and sisters. Love the shirts, Brother Aaron and Brother uh, uh, Barry. Love the shirts. All right. I took the DNA test. God is my father. All right. I love him. So God bless you all. Brother John, watch me for that great day. Sounding off, signing off <laughs> with the show for. <laughs> God, brothers and sisters, have a great day. Uh, if I don't see you, if the 4th of July happens and you're going to parades and you're spending time with your families, God bless you all. And my heart, my heart to you, I love you. All right? Each and every one of you, you're my brothers and sisters. And we're going home maybe before the 4th, all right? Keep looking up, brothers and sisters. Be encouraged. Love you all. Bye.